Hey friends, happy Sunday. This is a very brief and unrehearsed teaching because I'm on my way to church, but I wanted to give you something before I left. So today I'm gonna teach you about the breakthrough or the breaker anointing. And I want you on your own, write this down, write down Micah 2 verse 13, which is the last book of the Old Testament. And there you will see something about the breakthrough anointing. It says the, uh, the breaker has come upon them and the king leads them, the king being Jesus. So in the breaker anointing, or the breakthrough anointing, Jesus as king in his glory will come and lead the, the way and cause things to happen by the breaker anointing. Now the breakthrough anointing, you can see in the orange here, or the red, they are bursts of God's power. They come as immediate thoughts. When you first start to minister and reach out to people, you will not minister in the breakthrough anointing. As I did, when I first ministered, you want to get a, a, a complete uh, a word from the Lord, kind of a set of instructions of, a, of a what God wants you to do, uh, a detailed vision. You start to get confidence as you minister to people. But then, so that's not going to really allow you to really minister a lot on the breakthrough anointing because the breakthrough anointing happens usually it happens in the immediate. It happens in God's glory. It happens instantaneously. And because it happens in the immediate and instantaneously, many times it's just one thought, one word. Right now, it, after many years of ministry, I will step out not even in a word. I'll step out in half a word. I won't even step out in a complete thought to pray for somebody. I'll step out on half a thought because I've come to recognize God's voice. So the breakthrough anointing, since it happens instantaneously and it's bursts of God's power, of God's ability that brings that breakthrough, uh, because of that, it's you you have to learn how to recognize God's voice to a point that the immediate thought, the immediate picture, the one little vision. The one impression, the the instantaneous desire that you have in your heart, then you do it. That's the breakthrough anointing. Now, it's very important. Let's go. Can't see what the heck I'm doing here. Sorry. Let's go to the purple. I think it says, because I'm reading it backwards, the way you see it in your spirit that instantaneous thought, the way that you 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 think it, the, the picture that you get, the way that you see it, you minister it in exactly the same way. Many people will get scared of that because they'll get a word which seems weird, they'll get a picture which seems weird, and then they try to sweeten it up. They try to make it. They try to cut. They try to explain it. Let me tell you something. I want you to listen to me very carefully. The moment that you try to sweeten up or make the picture nicer, or you try to explain what you're seeing to the person, or you're trying, if it's a, if it's kind of a difficult word, if you're trying to make it uh, 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 not as hard, I'll tell you something, the anointing will not be there. That's why people, many times, they operate by their thoughts. You see ministers operating by what seems right, by their thoughts, and the anointing is not there. The breakthrough anointing operates in proportion to how closely you minister to the person exactly to what you're seeing inside. Let me paraphrase it. The breakthrough anointing Will, 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 will manifest proportionally to how exactly what you see in your spirit you minister to the person. The more exact you are, the greater will be the breakthrough anointing. That's why when God tells me, I want you to blow on those five people, one after another, bang, 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 bang. 
It might seem foolish. I said, my God, you know, this is blowing on a person. What are they gonna think about me? But you know what? The moment that I see it, next person, next person, next person, and they fall, bang, 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 and they get, and they get delivered. Or, or, or now, you gotta understand something. There's a lot of things to minister to people. You got to tell people. First of all, under the breakthrough anointing, you know, if you have a chance to say to the person, "Can I put?" Especially if it's something that's gonna be impactful, like if God says, "Grab their head and blow it, and blow on them." You, you stop and you say, "Look, God showed me this. Can I grab your head and then blow on you?" I always try to stop. In enough, and God will give you enough time. If God will give you enough time to ask the person, we don't touch people without their permission. This stuff that ministers do it, it gets me so angry of shaking people and pushing people down. You don't have to do that. That is pride. That is selfish pride. That is trying to bring glory to yourself. God does not need you to push down anybody. Do you understand me? Now, you can go like this. When 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 God says fire, you'll go like this. You'll grab the person and you'll say fire. And there'll be that momentary time in which you'll just kind of release it. But this thing that I've seen people push and yank them, that's of the devil. That is pride. If you if you're listening to my tapes, I'm gonna tell you something. Don't get into that baloney of shaking people and going uh, like this and try to push them down. God has enough power. You do that because you're not functioning in the breakthrough anointing. That's why you do that. Learn to function by the voice of, of, of God, okay? So, very important. John 5, 19 and 21 up here. Read John 5, 19 and 21 through 21. That shows you how the breakthrough anointing works. The way that Jesus saw his father do it in the spirit with identi ident identicalness, he did it on the outside. When you read that in, in the Greek, it says that Jesus, the way he saw the father do it on, in the spirit, he copied it on the outside. And that's where the breakthrough anointing comes. Okay, so that's number two. The exact way that you see it in your spirit, you do it. But again, if it's something that you're going to grab a person, you're going to blow on them, God gives you enough time to be a gentleman, to be a gentle lady, and say, can I do this? You never yank a person. You never grab a person without asking them for permission. Their body is sacred. Okay? And I'm, I'm not angry, but I know there's people out there that they want to glorify their ministry. Don't glorify your ministry. Glorify God. Number three. Catchers, catchers, you must have a catcher. Many churches don't have catchers. Before you can operate in the in the breakthrough anointing, you must yourself have been a catcher. You cannot teach people to catch for you because when the breakthrough anointing comes and you're getting instantaneous bursts like of God's power, people are gonna fall. Not because you push them, but because they fall. And you need to have catchers. We've seen people fall radically under the power and hit their heads, really get banged. One lady got really dizzy. You must have a catcher that knows what he's doing. And before you can train a catcher to know what he's doing, you must go through a period of catching. So humble yourself. If you want to operate in the breakthrough anointing, in the miracle anointing, humble yourself and start catching at your church. Volunteer to become a catcher. And if, and, and if they don't have catching at your church, go to your pastor and say, we must have catchers because people get hit. People get injured. Number three then, have a catcher. You're a catcher first and then you have a catcher. And number four, once a person gets up, let me do it here, sorry. Once a person gets up or from, from the floor, minister to them. Don't be the famous and mighty minister that you're going bang, 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 and then leave. No. 
take out time. It's not about people falling. It's not about the breakthrough anointing. That's the beginning. When people get a breakthrough in something, they're probably going to be crying. They're probably going to be shaking. You don't just move to somebody else. You stay with them. Wait. Sometimes when people fall, I just wait. I'll call somebody else to come with me. If I have other people to pray for, if I have, you know, I was have, I was have, have a ministry team. Have a ministry team. Don't be the big minister on the lot that you have to be the only one ministry. No. God can do more through his body than what he can do through you or me. So what you do is, I have a ministry team. If I have a lot of people that are waiting for me to pray for them, I'll always call somebody and that person is on, on the ground and she or he is crying and they're shaking. I never, ever, ever leave them and just move to the other person, ever. You call someone from your ministry team and say, come up here, you pray for them. And that way you train other people to minister with you. So, I pray that there's four things here about the breakthrough anointing minister to you. I teach you what they are, instantaneous burst of God's ability and power. Then two, the way you see it is the way that you do it. And for that to happen, your spirit must be pure. You must have a good devotional time with the Lord so that you can really identify what the Spirit is saying. Number three, you must have catchers at all times. And before you can have a catcher, you must have yourself been a catcher. And number four, minister to them afterwards. If you cannot minister because you have a lot of people to pray for, then have someone from your ministry team come, but never leave the person alone on the ground as God has ministered to him. Okay, happy Sunday, my friends. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.